was school good for you? What was it like in terms of, did you? Well, it was a, it was a small town. It was 10,000 yeah. people. So, like I said, I was able to have the same best friend from kinder until the time I left. So in a way, uh, it was probably, you know, it meant that when I moved to, to Melbourne, I got a little bit of a kick in the pants. You know, yeah. it was a big adjustment, but, um, but I had a lovely smooth run early on. We did go to travel around Europe for a year when I was sort of eight, nine. Yeah, so did your parents just say, we just want to take you guys travelling? Yeah, Dad, Dad um, was a lawyer and he decided that he didn't want to ever work again. It didn't what? really pan out for him. <laughs> wow. But he tried to retire. He retired for a while and we travelled around, um, yeah, Europe for a year. And I went to school wow. in London. Because I was lonely, my brothers did correspondence. I did correspondence for a while, and then and then went to school there, and that was a great experience. Yeah, amazing. But apart from that kind of, and I knew that it had an end point. So apart from that sort of bubble of time of high adventure, it was a very safe kind of quiet childhood. And then did you move back to Melbourne when you were in year eight? Yes, we moved to Melbourne. Went at the end of between year eight and nine. Yeah, yeah. right. And what was that time? What was that transition from country to? That was a bit of a shock to the system, yeah. just because I'd had the same people around me all my life, and and yeah. it was kind of, it was just, you know, I was around, I went from a sort of a, a co-ed situation to a single sex girls school. Right. A lot of really smart girls and I had to uh, work a lot harder to be, you know, smart. That's kind of not a bad thing it's though, a good is thing. It? It's going to get yeah. you eventually, it's better to face the music, I think. What do you think about um, same sex and co-ed schools? Because I've got two boys and my partner's like, there is no way they can be around girls. He wouldn't have got a thing done. <laughs> he went to um, just boys' school. Yeah. What, what did you do? I did co-ed. Co-ed. Yeah. Also, I, I feel lucky that I had both. Yeah. Um, I don't know, really think it depends on the, on the kids. I know. It's hard, isn't it? Because my sister went to just a, to a girl's school mm. and a lot of her friends were very promiscuous and Brooke who works here with us is like yeah, oh, Brooke's seriously. really promiscuous she, so. no, no, back in the day she was very promiscuous <laughs> <laughs> and she's like it's because I went to a girl's school seriously yeah. we were just boys were rare well yeah I remember I was I had a lot of friends who were boys growing up and then I within about two years of being in an all girls school I started getting all silly and blushy and giggly around boys because yeah, they got they got strange and exotic all of a sudden. <laughs> didn't they <laughs> and I got less so I just kept yeah. eating Mars bars I think. Did you go through a rough stage? Oh, oh yeah, no, I went through, uh, I just got really quiet. Oh. So um, I was never really super extroverted, but I kind of knew my people and so it was kind of easy to be me. And then I kind of, I think I got a bit quiet for a little while and, and ate a few Mars bars. <laughs> <laughs> I was the ugliest teenager you could have ever seen. I find that very hard no, to believe. This is as good as it gets. <laughs> well, Seriously. I show Sam, my boyfriend, pictures of me and he's like, wow. Like he can't even hold back. I'm like, this is what our kids are going to potentially look like. I went, I knew I was going through an awkward phase and so I avoided the camera. Yeah. So there right. actually isn't that much evidence. Like there's, you know, the odd family birthday shot and I'm sort of... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were you bigger? I can oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Really? Yeah, no, I was quite portly there for a while. Oh, wow. And did yeah. you just grow out of that or did you? Yeah, I just finished school and, you know, stopped eating Mars bars. As Don't much. you? See, I, I think about <laughs> what I, when I would get home from school, what I would eat before you would have your dinner. You were just so ravenous. I was just procrastinating. I didn't want to. I didn't want to study. Yeah. And there was a bit of pressure on me to study. You know, they were spending all this money on a good school and Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't want to, so I, What was yeah. your body image like when you were at school, especially at a girls' school? Oh, well, they're great. Oh, they're great. It's a mixed blessing. You know, you've got those big school uniforms with blazers and stuff. Yeah. You can pretty much kind of yeah. you can go crazy under there. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no one never, knows. And we're talking about anyway. the late eighties, early nineties where everything was quite baggy. Yeah, right. So it gave me free reign. It was like wearing a maternity smock. You came into my world um, as Roberta Williams, which was completely an amazing role. You did. That. Oh, it was so much fun. It, it was so incredible, and I was reading that you never met her, and I guess it was like there are many. Was the internet even that big then? Yeah. So this is uh, we shot it, it sort of towards the end of two thousand and seven. Okay, so yeah, so there it was, definitely was. I was I was <laughs> I was able to do quite a bit of research, and I was able to um, look at court documents. So there was a lot of information about her unbelievably sad childhood right. and and I was able to speak to yeah police and and, and some, some law people that had, had contact with her but at that stage the producers were quite adamant that I shouldn't speak with her even though oh. I, I really wanted to actually why were they adamant that you should well, just for whatever reason they felt it wasn't a good idea and right. I went with that but um but in a way you know working with that it gave me 
an opportunity to use a lot of my imagination too. So yeah. but the weird thing was she became quite um, visible after Underbelly. Yes. Yeah. And then I really got to sort of study her because there wasn't that much footage of her. No. Um, and so it was interesting. She was, there were elements I think that we kind of got, but she's actually quite a different quite a different person. Because they did a spin-off and you said, I can't play her now, I know too much about her and it's not. That's exactly right. Yeah, for Fat Tony. And um, she was actually going to be available to me for that, if, if, if or the actress, whoever was to do it. And um, and I just thought, oh, I, I can't undo the one. I feel like there'll be the expectation and the temptation for me to do, oh, sorry, I'm hitting my <laughs> microphone, <laughs> um, to do Roberta that I did all those years ago, but yeah. I, I couldn't in all conscience. I, I would have to be starting from scratch. Is it, was it scary playing somebody who was in that world that lived in the same town as you? Well, you're, you're Melbourne, yes. so you, it's, it was a pretty big thing in Melbourne, the gangland stuff, yeah. where everyone knew somebody or knew somebody who knew somebody. So that was, we were very conscious of the fact that we were portraying real people. Yeah, I would be so scared. Um, I was, in a way, I would be more so now, knowing a bit more, but at the time it was, you know, a bit exciting and a bit covert and a bit, yeah, you know, right, we weren't right, told right. much. I got to, I got two audition scenes and that was it. There was no episode to read. I didn't know how big the character was going to be or I thought she might just be in an episode or two. And you bloody stole it. That was your show. Oh, don't. It, you can, you, look at you. you. It was so incredible. You won awards and it was amazing. Oh, I, I loved it. And it was, it ended up being a fantastic opportunity and she ended up getting, you know, a really good run in, in the show. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I loved it. I'm really grateful for it. And then from that, do you feel like that was kind of your, because I know you've been acting for a long time, but do you feel that was is the is the role that really cemented your name? Um, it's sort of weird looking back. At the time, I've got to tell you, it didn't feel very different because um, it wasn't screened in Melbourne because it was yeah, banned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. people in my circle weren't watching it. And I know the guys that were in Sydney were getting a lot of attention and were, you know, getting mobbed at pubs and stuff. Yeah. But I was just pottering around working on an SBS show three days a week and you yeah, know, right. going about my business. But in retrospect, I can see that it, it certainly helped open some doors, but at the time it, it was very gradual. Offspring, can we chat Offspring? Yes. Oh my God, I loved it so much. Oh, I love doing it. I Are really we allowed to say that your role was, that Billy was um, like parts of Emeril Shiano were pulled <laughs> into Billy? Yes, I think so. Um, Cause Em we've had on the couch yes. and has written for us quite a lot. And she's good friends with- um, Really good friends with Michael Lucas. Yes. I think they're best mates. And um, you know, Michael told me that she inspired quite a lot of the, the Billy dialogue from him. And he's one of the three main writers and she's so good. Yes, so funny. Yeah. So funny. And yeah. I love when you hear that. And now I can see parts, yeah. you know, I wish I had known that while I was watching it. But you signed on to do that before you even read anything. And what, is that a, a massive gamble to take? Yeah, but no, but I just, I just worked with um, the producers, um, John Edwards and Imogen Banks on a show called Tangle on Foxtel, which oh I loved. Oh my God, my favourite. Oh, I love that show so oh, much. I love it so, so much. So I knew they were, they were, you know, really on the ball and had such a great kind of track record. Yes. And I just, great taste. And I knew the writer, not personally, but I knew the work of Deborah Oswald, who was writing the pilot and was creating the show. And they already had Asha, and so it was kind of it, was it wasn't, no that, wasn't that hard a decision to make. Yeah. Um, hold on, in Tangle, you get to kiss Dan Wiley, who yes. is like my favourite. Yes, I did. What, what is an that awful like? job I have? Oh my god, <laughs> he because I we had Justine Kike here, and off oh. camera she was telling me some because she's had to do love sex scenes with him too, and I was like, you've got to tell me all about it. For some reason, I am find him so attractive. He's very attractive. Yes. Yeah. What was that like? Give me anything. Well, I was actually pregnant when I was doing that storyline, but I wasn't telling anybody. Oh. So I felt quite self-conscious, I remember. But um, he's lovely and he's so funny. Yes. Is it hard when they're funny and they're kind of like your mates and you've got to be intimate with them? I don't even know. It's so weird. It's a strange thing to do, you know, to be chatting to someone and then, oh, we're going to be, you know, Bashing. It's just, but you kind of do it, and you do invest you in that moment. Beforehand, it's weird. Yeah, you do discuss. Um, do you go? Let's. I'm not going to use tongue. Don't use your tongue. Do you have to have conversations like that? Because what if somebody just slipped in the tongue and you weren't ready for it? Oh, that's a weird one. Okay, I kind of have a uh, a semi policy for stage. No one can see your tongue on yeah, stage. Okay. You don't need to. Yeah. You know, 
for, and it's pretend, and you're going to do it a lot every night, so, you know, I don't think you need to, yeah, really. Yeah, okay. For screen, you kind of have to do it for real, whatever your real yeah, is. Well. Some people are tonguey, some aren't, I don't know. You totally get to, like, legally cheat. That's what it is. <laughs> it's totally is. It's weird. Yeah. Some of the, we had some people writing um, articles about Offspring when it was on, and they would go through the roof. It was amazing, wasn't it? Oh, and I am... Um, Talking to people, I remember in series one when Nina slept with uh, Mick, I went to the gym and um, yes. the, the woman at the gym saying to me, because it sort of been, it had been signalled in the preview, you know, the, the previous week, and she said, it's not true, is it? Oh, I know. And I said, you'll have to watch. And she said, I thought she was better than that. Because <laughs> you were real character, but you were real. Are we still rolling? Because yeah. I'm just going to keep going with this. Um, <laughs> Because the relationship, I'm not, I have an older sister and a younger sister, yeah. younger half sister, but the relationship Nina and Billy had, I was really envious of. It was so I, beautiful. Yes, and it became more so because it was quite, uh, in the first series, it was quite antagonistic. Yeah. And then at the end, um, it really became one of my favourite things about the show and yeah. then more so as the show progressed and, and certainly in the last last two series and especially in the last series we got to live together again yes. and I'm, I love that it was great it was fun. then the chemistry between the two of you was incredible is that do you have to have a really close bond with somebody to have that kind of chemistry off camera um I don't know it's funny because we're but both um Asher and I are very different to the characters we play mm. and we're actually quite different people as well but we get along really well yeah that I don't know, it's, it's something you can't... And then you can work with someone who you're quite similar to and it won't work, work. necessarily on yeah, screen. So it's just one of those weird alchemy sort of things. But we both really cared about that relationship and invested a lot in it and we had some great times. And also, you know, when you're, when you're on set, there's a lot of downtime with, you know, setups yeah. and time in the green room. And so, you know, we went through a lot in our lives in, you know, five and a bit years. Yeah. Um, you know, birth, deaths, you know, marriages, totally. everything. So, um, yeah, we, we, had a, we had an amazing ride together. When a show, because there's rumours that it's, it was coming back and now it's not. Do you know where it's at with that? I don't know. I really don't. And you'll probably be one of the last people we to will, Yes, we will be. Hilarious? I think so. I, when we were shooting it, we thought that was it, I think. Yeah. Um, and it felt like that's, it uh, felt like it was sort of, we could leave it there. Yeah. But it, it's since, you know, shifted and then shifted and I don't know. I don't know where it's at at the moment, but it's certainly possible. Yeah. Because your husband's also an actor. Yes. And you guys met yeah. at working together. Yes. Was your first kiss on stage? Yes. How's that? Was it like, oh my God, okay, this is it? I remember... It was a, like a four week run of a play and I remember at about week three thinking, should I be looking forward to that part of the, the... yeah, he's a really good kisser, that helps. <laughs> because you'd have some lousy ones too, wouldn't you really? Oh, I've been pretty lucky, I think. I've had some pretty nice people to kiss, really. Yeah, you have. yeah. I'm yeah. jealous of you yeah. actually. I'm not even envious, I'm just <laughs> jealous you have to rub down, darling. <laughs> Let's go back to your husband from that yeah. back to your husband. Um, he's an actor too. How does it feel when you do have to? play roles like that and you know the other's going to be watching? Uh, he is not in the least bit phased, right. um, which is sort of good, yeah. but, <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, I, I don't love it. I don't love it when he has to kiss someone else, but I kind of, we have to, it's just the way it is, you yeah. know, and we trust each other and that's, I guess that's why he's not phased. He doesn't, he's not in the least bit worried about me. So. Yeah, yeah, no, which is nice. At least he's yeah, really confident yeah. in your relationship. He's very confident about me. I like yeah. that with my boyfriend too sometimes. I'm like, you never get jealous. You should get a little bit jealous. Just doesn't. Yeah, just pretend. Humor me. Yeah, yeah, pretend yeah. something, anything. So how did that kiss on stage eventuate to you guys? Oh, well, we were both in serious relationships with other people. So um, I remember thinking, oh, oh. And that was socially awkward around him for about two years. <laughs> <laughs> Just really twitchy and odd yeah, and kind right. of, you know, <laughs> but really aware of where he was in the room, but kind of uncomfortable yes, with that. isn't that funny? I when love him, that. So eventually he split up with his lovely girl who I knew before him. Um, and then about 18, 18 years, felt like it, but 18 months later, I, I was single and then we were doing a play and then we, yeah, got together. And so, but it was a long, long road, but I, there yeah. was definitely a spark. Not that I was comfortable with it, but there was definitely a yeah. spark very early on. Because sometimes that would 
would happen. Oh yeah, it can easily like happen. In the nature. Mm. You're not a method actor though, are you? Is a method no. actor is when they just completely embody the character. Because that would be hard to go, I need, I'm meant to be in love with this person and then not kind of get those feelings. Well, I think, I think when you're younger, in so your twenties, I think you know, go for it. Have lots of, you know, have fun. But I guess when you when you get a bit older, you kind of you realise that it's um, they're like summer romances. You have to understand what they are and understand yes. that um, it's not real. It's the, the the work you're doing. And so I, I try, and I don't want to be smug about this because people stuff it up all the time. But yeah. I try and keep it really clear. Um, and I think when you get older, everyone else is married too, so you just have to keep yeah. it really, or, or in relationships, keep it really clear that it's, it's work.